In this first tutorial, I will show you how to prepare bitmaps for input into 8-bit Unity. To display correctly on the Commodore, the Atari and the Apple, your artwork will need to be resized and the palette adjusted to match each system. Uh, for this purpose, we are going to use GIMP, which is bundled together with the 8-bit Unity SDK. So here we are in the install folder of 8-bit Unity, and for this tutorial, we are going to take a look inside the Assets folder. Uh, you will find three subfolders for your bitmaps, music, and sprites. And taking a closer look at bitmaps, uh, you can see a couple of examples here, a banner, as well as a racetrack, for an example. And each of these has already been converted into uh, one instance of each platform. Uh, going back one step, you will find here there is a batch file for running GIMP, which is bundled together with 8-bit Unity and in this version of GIMP I have included some palettes which we are going to use uh, for asset conversion. Alright, so here we are inside GIMP and I loaded already uh, my artwork for conversion and the first step which you should always take is to make sure that there is no transparency channel inside this picture. So if you look here on the bottom right there are tabs for layers and channels and if I click at channels on this picture, I can see that there is included an alpha. So I want to remove this alpha, uh, otherwise my picture will not be able to be uh, converted by the 8-bit Unity uh, Python script. So let's go to layer, transparency, and remove alpha channel. The next step now is to resize the picture for the uh, intended target, and our first target is going to be uh, the apple. So for this I go to image, scale, and I'm going to enter the size in pixels which is required for the apple too, 140 by 192. An important setting is the interpolation method. Uh, there are five different options and personally I would recommend to use that you always stick to interpolation known in order to keep sharp edges. To give you an example of this, I'm going to use first a cubic algorithm and scale. And as you can see on the resulting picture, uh, the lines for the pumpkins have become somewhat blurry. They're not very sharp anymore. If I come back one step with Ctrl Z and reduce the same scaling, this time switch to interpolation known and scale. As you can see, I've maintained sharp contours for my uh, pumpkin. Uh, the next step will be to change the colors to the palette of the Apple II system. So on the top right, if you click on the Palettes tab, uh, you will see that this uh, bundled GIMP co comes with uh, palettes for the Apple, the Atari, and the C64. So to switch palette, we simply have to go to Image, mode, indexed. And then here we use the custom palette option and we select our Apple palette. Uh, please notice that this option below to remove unused and duplicate colors should be unchecked. Otherwise you will lose color in the palette and the converter will not be able to correctly um, convert the resulting picture. So here I click convert and at this point I have a picture now which is ready uh, to be used with the Apple system. So I can click file, export as and I can give a file name which corresponds to uh, the platform that uh, is intended for this uh, specific picture. If I want to then move on to uh, the next system, I can just type Ctrl Z two times and I can now scale to the size of the next target which will be the Atari, so 160 by 200 with no interpolation and then I can go on to applying the palette 
4C Atari. However, here you will see immediately that the number of colors available on the Atari, which is only 9, means that in some instances uh, you may lose uh, the detail of the picture, or worse, what you were intending to use as a player field, for instance here the sky, being where my characters will be able to uh, move, uh, has by now become uh, somewhat uh, mixed with the color of some of the items on the pumpkins. To address this issue, I can come back one step, and using the fuzzy select tool, I can select parts of the picture, which I would like to define as my play field, and then using the Atari palette, I will double click, I select one of the colors which I intend to use as my uh, play field color. You should be careful how you choose this play field color because of the way the Atari bitmap, mo bitmap mode has been implemented. Uh, we are actually mixing two frames made of four colors and by flickering the frames we can generate nine colors. So the single colors are black, red, blue and green. And all the other colors are mixed between those three four fundamental colors. So for this picture, I probably would like to use something like blue for the sky. So what we're going to do is to pick up the blue color, and we're going to drag and drop onto the selected areas. And so we have now replaced the background with a fully blue color. So I must uh, insist that the black, red, blue and green are the colors that should be used for the playfield background. Uh, using any of the other colors will just cause so much flickering that it may be difficult to see the sprites uh, on the screen. So having done this, uh, we should now uh, select the entire screen. So we can do this by selecting outside of the uh, bitmap. And then we can go back and apply the index palette for the Atari. And this is the final result, uh, which does look a lot better than what we had previously. We can now go and export this picture for the Atari system. So again, coming back a few steps. And we're going to apply the scale for the final target, which is uh, uh, C64, which is again a 160 by 200 scale. And this time, just going straight for the C64 palette should give uh, a very uh, reasonable result. So we can go and export to the C64. So up to this point, we've only generated the PNG uh, versions of the uh, bitmaps. And in a later tutorial, I will show you once your bitmaps, sprites, and music tracks are all ready, how you can use the Python Packager uh, to put all this data onto the final disk, uh, which we want to distribute for Commodore, Atari, and Apple users. Initial release of 8-bit Unity is planned for February 2019 as a free download. If you would like to support this effort, uh, please visit my Patreon page. And I would like to thank my uh, current patrons, Carl and Brian, Thank you very much for being such early supporters of this project.